Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to Conversations with S.D. Booker. Today, I got a special, special guest, a friend, a business partner, my man, Demetrius Glenn from Know Yourself Fitness and Mentoring Group. How you doing, brother? Phenomenal, bro. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Man, uh, this is long overdue. And uh, I guess we've been talking about it for about a month, I guess, for about a month. Right, but, right, uh, right. I mean, just amazing how it came together. I know you got two business partners that's involved with you, so they may mm -hmm. show up later, uh, or they may not. But hey, man, we're gonna keep this thing rolling. So, right. uh, yeah, guys, you're coming in, you're, you're joining in. Hit that like button right away. Yeah, you hit that like button and subscribe, and uh, we're gonna drop some jewels for you. So, yeah. brother, knowing fitness. Knowing fitness, knowing yourself, fitness and mentoring group. Wow, that's uh, that's heavy. So mm -hmm. we got Dakir, Dakir, mm -hmm. Dakir. We got that yeah. coming in, brother. Okay. Hey, he he'll, he'll be the best one to answer that question. Okay. He already said he okay. got the he got the staff <laughs> he got the staff behind him too. So you got to ask him that question. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. Oh, oh man, see, I've done my research. I've done my research. So that that stick doesn't surprise me, man. So <laughs> man, this brother got some heavy stuff on his on his Facebook page. Man, I'm like, uh -oh. man, uh -oh. uh -oh. we going no, live. No, no, we going no, live. No, no, it's in, it's in, it's enlightening though. It's enlightening though because it's history. Some history, like I didn't even know you know, um, about our people. So I was like, man, I was just going through last night, man, doing my due diligence. And I was like, man, this is some deep stuff I had no idea about, you know, uh, and I felt guilty. Like, man, I should know this, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> hey, it is what it is, man. So welcome, that Kier Bay. How you doing, brother? Greetings, greetings, I'm marvelous. Good to have you. As I was saying, I got my brother, Demetrius Glenn, and he has two business partners. This is one that Cure Bay with Know Yourself Fitness and Mentoring Group. Hey, welcome, brother. So I'll start with you then, then that Cure, because then Glenn, uh, uh, Demetrius, you know, passed the baton. <laughs> Knowing, know yourself, know yourself, that's, uh, that's heavy. So can you dive into that? that why, why that title? Of the other group know yourself fitness and mentoring group the reason we would use that title would spark from the interaction that we have with the youth at the youth jail so we get the opportunity to firsthand watch young men who come from great and rich heritage as far as parenting. You know, some of these boys' parents come from the islands or, you know, uh, the continents of the motherland. <clears throat> and then they've grown up in South Dallas and all they've known was South Dallas and, you know, Oak Cliff is their arrival and they haven't even, they've never even traveled to Fort Worth, you know, so for Demetrius and I to come in and have studied about the history of the world and to have done a little bit of traveling of the world, um, that was the only title that fit, you know, because especially for us as a melanated people, for us to not know ourselves and not know our history, not know our heritage, that's, you know, some of the struggle that we have. And then not knowing ourselves, we don't know even how to be a human. So 95% right. of people walk around dehydrated every day, you know, don't even know that you need to drink more water. I drink enough water, you know, you don't, you need more water, you know, that's something that simple. So right. for us to, to title it, Know Yourself, it was only fitting 
because you know that's what we came here to do as a people as humans and that's what the, the deeper struggle is to know thyself remembering you know remembering thyself so right right i mean what what brought you two brothers together and what made you say we're going to combine consciousness to physical health right that that what what made you do that uh i'll start what <laughs> brought us together is blood you know so we have come from a particular lineage in which cousins married cousins so if, you know two male cousins married you know two female cousins and you know down the line produced us you know and uh yeah we're cousins on a, a strong connection and strong frequency to the point where, you know, we even call ourselves twins or uh, the boys at the jail would look at us and say, you know, sorry, y'all brother. No, that's not my brother. You know, <laughs> is that your friend? And they immediately go from brother to friend. And he's like, mm. nah, man, I don't have friends. Mm. What? You know, and so we talk to them differently than your average male or men, you know, would. So mm. no, I don't have friends, man. Only have family. Wow. You know, and so if Demetrius wants to expound. Yeah, and, and adding on to, to what he was saying, you know, we would go in and we were like, we, we have an associate, you either an associate or your family. Mm. That's what that, that's what brotherhood is. You then a brotherhood is family or you you're an associate. And so um so have having that dynamic of having boys look at us because we 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 talking to them different, you know. Like we had to prove we from Pleasant Grove so many times. They like niggas from Pleasant Grove don't talk like that, you know. Let yeah. we be laughing, bro. Cause they be they be dead serious, right? You know, and you know because they 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 like coming from a, a real place. Like nah, nah, I know dude from Pleasant Grove, you know, right. and 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 so by by us sharing sharing our history where we from, and then and then sharing our history before before us, you know, you know they they listen to us and they're like wow. Man, how, how y'all know that? So yeah. it was always amazing to be able to, to listen to that and and for them to think that we have to be from somewhere else, you know, to to know what we know. You know, because in their mind, there's no way that you know what you know being from from where where we from. Right. You know, so so like know know yourself has so so many aspects of it. Like you should know for yourself. You know, when one of the first questions we ask the boys when we get there, you know, when we introduce ourselves, we ask, what did your name mean? You know, very, very, very simple one. Right. An average per person don't know what their name mean. Right. right. You know, so right. so then they ask us, well, what does your name mean? So we are going, you know, using et etymology and we and we we taking it back to how it, it, what it originally was, how, how it was used now and. And and to be able to have to watch them look at us and and be like amazed, like nah, man, y'all ain't real, you know. We we ain't ever seen no no no, no dudes, yeah. you know, that talk like that. And and just sharing with them, just just the basics of knowing your name means something because that's been spoken every day when somebody call your name. An example I like to give: What if your name means jackass? And then somebody laughing at you, calling you a jackass, but you get mad because you you don't know what your name means. I don't know. Like so you think that person, right? So you think that person wrong, right? But 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 they they really not, you right. know. They just calling you for 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 what what your name represents, right? You know. Right. So so this is something that's being able to to share with them about knowing for yourself. You should want to know what your name means, and why wouldn't you want to know what your name means? And why didn't your parents say something? And then it goes back to what did our parents know? Right, right. You and, know, and, and, and I want to say this uh, for the people listening. So you, when you say you're talking to the youth, you're talking about the youth village, correct? Is that right. the, the community you're, you're talking about? And the youth village, yeah. what, what does that entails? What is that, what is that about? The, the youth village is a, a, a juvenile detention center system. You know, um, you have youth on, on average in between 13 to 17 years old that are locked up. You know, but we, we've seen as young as like 11. 
11, 12, you know, being there. And so it's a, they have two different types. They have a dorm lock, lockdown unit, which is like um, what, what the youth village is. They also have in, in the same lot, they have another one called the Medlock Treatment Center, which is a, a real lockdown jail, like the, uh, like, like the Hutchins unit and Wilma Hutchins, because they're, they're on the same street. You know, so, so you got men's prison, halfway house, then you got juvenile jail, juvenile jail, and you got, got the marshals, the marshal station right next to it. And the gun wow. range. And the gun range. Wow, wow. Right. So, <laughs> so, 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 so think, think about that. We've had times where we've been outside and you can hear pop, 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 pop. So we always tell them they're getting ready for you. Yes. Yes. They're over there training for you. Yes. Yeah, you know, because yeah. this stuff is real, you know, so yeah. it, it goes back. It's a it's a um, it's, it's a juvenile jail. You know, they they put twist on it, calling the village and a treatment center yeah. and all that type of stuff. This is, this is a juvenile jail. Right. And and this is something I wonder um, when it comes to juvenile, the juvenile jail or, or systems like that. Do you believe that is a gateway or, or something that's preparing them for adult jail? Or, or are they really trying to help and rehabilitate? There ain't no belief. We know that for a fact. Okay. Okay. <laughs> pipeline. That, that's that's pipeline. Right. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you an example, and, and a doc, doc here can chime in uh, at whenever he, he he feels he needs to as well. In order for them to pass gas, they have to ask for permission. Wow. In order for them to use use the restroom. They have to ask for permission. Any time that they walk outside as a group, they have to have their hands behind their back as if they have cuffs on. Uh, it's all mental. <laughs> all day. <laughs> all day. You, you cannot stand up unless you are given permission because if you do, then you are telling them that you are either trying to run or you're trying to uh, attack them. Wow, man. So, right. okay, so you brothers are, are definitely uh, conscious and you, you know yourself. But obviously, you're working with youth that's in a, a European or white establishment. So how does that work? You coming at, the, coming at these young brothers speaking consciousness and about their history and empowering them in this establishment that is run by white people. That's some yeah. bold. That's some bold shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that was part of the conversations that I would have with a friend of mine when we started a different program up that was including music. It's you know we're in the belly of the beast trying to drag these boys out and knowing that since these boys are in the fourth grade, they've been on the stock exchange getting flipped, you know, and then we tell them like you know. You out here being pimped, man. You a prostitute, you know. Like, yeah, you think you getting jacks and getting licks and whatever you want to call it, man, but you getting pimped, brother. You know, and so that's the beauty and the challenge, man, because a lot of these boys come from neighborhoods or come from homes where they might get one meal a day. So getting two or three meals guaranteed at the jail is nice for them. Mm. You know, some boys, they don't have anybody in their neighborhoods or their houses. You know, one boy, he, had, he got put back in the system because he didn't have uh, adults in his house and he was the adult taking care of his, his sister. Yeah. You know, he's 17, he got put back in because he didn't have an adult in the house, so. Yeah. We know that we have a unique dynamic and growing up, we were involved in a mentoring program that was based around the church system, but it was a good brother, you know, named Seth L. Bailey, who uh, is a magnificent man. And uh, he sparked that energy in us early, you know, to look out for brothers or look out for each other, look out for your peers. And now that 
we have the ability to go back and, you know, look out for those brothers, I mean, it's only fitting because outside of church services that go up there and offer the boys food in order to come to their program or whatnot, you know, I mean, there's nobody else that does that for them. And I know they're not getting this type of information in their hood or they OGs, you know, they OGs are 20 years old. So they OGs barely know anything about earth, you know, so how they going to tell them anything about consciousness when they've been stuck, you know, in, in their in their own, you know, twelve by twelve square they live. So right. And 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 to add to what Doc here said, um, when we when we finally found our uh, niche, you know, have you you ever heard of um, hidden hidden colors? Yes, yes, with my boy uh, Tyree. You're fired. Tyree, I, right? I watched, man, I believe man, I watched we the went first in first three. Uh, yeah, the first three. We got, you know, when we were just bringing in, when we would come in and just and just bring all of the the so-called ho- holy books, you know, the the Quran, the Bible, the Tanakh, the, uh, Tanakh bringing in the Dead Dead Sea Scrolls, we bringing in the uh, Black Black's Law Dictionary, we 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 bringing in all all of these different books that they've they've never heard of before, and and just landed out in front of them. And and we we started there so they can be able to see. Are you aware that you're supposed to be reading from right to left versus left to right? Mm. Like, are are you aware the holy book's supposed to go from right to left? We're supposed to drive on the right side. The United States is the only one who drives on the left side. So we we just giving them little small, yeah. you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, snippets of information. And when we brought in Hidden Colors, the first one, that's when we got. We got shut shut down to the to oh, the yeah. point to where that's <laughs> bro. Hey, 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 you laughing? No, I'm sitting here thinking. Gonna, no, I'm sitting like, here right. listening to you, but I'm like, how the hell did this brother get by with all this? <laughs> right, 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 right. Now, now when, when we had the the books and stuff, because they got they got crates full full of Bibles, mm. crates, crates <laughs> full of Bibles, bro. Not surprising, bro. Crate, bro. Crates full of Bibles, oh, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, really? Y'all got all this stuff? Y'all got all these Bibles in here? Oh, wow, that's amazing. But then they don't know the difference between a version and a translation. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know, and 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 so when we brought in that Hidden Colors, man, and the boys started going back to the um, churches when they, when they be having the Bible studies with them, right. and then they started questioning them, and then they, they brought us up. And then that's when they told us, if you don't, if you're not coming here as a church, then you can't, you can't, you can't do that no more. But then they told us, if if they ask us questions, then we can answer however we want. I said, oh, bet we in. We go ahead and take that. It was. See, you already planted the seed, though. Yeah. Right, right, because the seed had already been planted, and those boys, they if you if one boy knows anything about you, you better guarantee the whole village knows. You know, because that's how they talk. That community and network, if you you know, especially if it's something they like about you, that's intriguing to them. So, like you know, Demetrius was saying, we were getting into those boys' heads to the point where some of the boys was like, "Sir," but my parents and my mom teach me and tell me, you know, and so that's when we really had to back it up, man, because we were it was too much for some of these boys to handle. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't want to say that, you know, they've been lied to, but when you come from parents that don't know, right. they're just going to teach you what they know, you know. Right. And so if they come from grandparents, you know, and it just passes down. So, yeah. you know, that was the, the thing about it. But like you say, after that seed that being planted, man, then every other group that comes up after that, they're like, sir. You're the guys that uh 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 do you believe in God? And you know, so, <laughs> right. you know, so, you know. Yeah, hey, hey, there it goes. Hey, right, yeah, right. You know, I was gonna ask you brothers how y'all got into this work, but you you answered that. And um your group is named Know Yourself Fitness and Mentoring Group. Now you covered the knowing yourself. Now we get to the fitness. Now I grew up as many in the Christian church right? Baptist. 
And, you know, I used to ask a lot of questions or wonder a lot of things. And I'm going to tell you, man, <laughs> it's some things that the church will not cover that's in the Bible. Um, scriptures that says, uh, know yourself, you're, you're God. Uh, that type uh -oh. of that scripture. Uh -oh. <laughs> that, that watch out, watch out, man. Watch out, man. Watch out, man. Hey, Come well, on. I'm just saying. And, 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 <laughs> and I'm getting to this point. It doesn't cover the diet, right? I've never seen one or heard one pastor since I've been knowing going to church, since I've been consciously going to church, talk about the diet that was expressed in the Bible. Now, now that may be a different diet. Uh, it, it, it certainly is a different diet than, than uh, Dr. CB would recommend or some other brothers. But uh, there is a diet that <laughs> it says we should go by, right? If you're a Christian. Now, I'm not a Christian, but I'm just saying. It, it, there is a diet in there, but it's never talked about. Now, I know Black Christians, man, are some of the most unhealthiest people on this earth. Like, and that includes the pastor. And that that always confused me. Like, I, I just never understood that even as a kid. And it's like we elevated too, because that's the woman that sings the best, that leads all the songs, man, to <laughs> be the heaviest. The pastor mm -hmm. <laughs> that that you know preaches the hardest, most of the time is the most unhealthiest. And it goes on and on, man. And you got a lot of wheelchairs and walkers in the church with people that are 40, 50 years old. Now, as a kid, I was young. I'm thinking these people are old. But looking back, man, these people are in their 40s and 50s. What? <laughs> How can we change that in the community and show them the correlation, the connection between knowing yourself and being fit? How? What what is that? Is that a brainwashing? Like, what's what is it with with us? What what's that about? And how can we change that? I'll go first. I I I, I go ahead and go first. I go first. Um, in in the Bible, they have uh, there's like small references of about about diets and, and foods, mm -hmm. and um, and, and I think. Christians, quote unquote, don't deal with it because it's in the Old Testament. Mm. And the reason why they don't want to touch it because it's old, quote, quote unquote, Old Testament, you know, because because mm. we've been we've been taught that the New Testament is is the new. Jesus did away with the old and he abolished all, all that. And, you know, not not realizing that they're really talking about Paul because this is Paul's teachings, but right. he's right. piggybacking on Jesus. But but that's that's a totally different. Yeah. That, yeah. that's a, that's and, another and, that's another topic right, you know, right, you know, right, too, right. you know and, and and so really um plants plant-based diet is the diet you know really you know uh based, based on what, where you live um geographically some some areas would have goats some areas would have camels some areas would have different different um you know type of animals that that you could eat from you know as it pertains to milk or or um at, actual meat and muscle, you know, that type of thing. But mostly it was always a plant based diet. And then, and so for us, <clears throat> because we don't, we don't really know much about, about the earth because we don't study the planet. So we don't, we don't know that, that what was happening up, up top is the same thing that's happening down here. And then we don't want to attribute anything to it. So the religion teaches us, well, we don't need to be worried about all that. You know, God God already have everything said the way it is. You just need to ask God and let God tell you what you're supposed to do and just wait. You know, uh, pray, you know, which which means to obtain by begging for. Right. And right. then wait. Right. Wait, and then, yeah, and, wait and, to and get wait to heaven see. later. <laughs> right. You know, so so you're going to go ahead and eat eat the way that, that you know how to eat because th those are rituals, but people don't know what rituals mean definition-wise. So we, we're practicing rituals every day. Now people say the slave diet, or they call call it soul food. Mm -hmm. Now if you're a, if you're a soul occupying this space as, as a human, then there's no way that that type of food 
does anything for you as a soul. There's no way possible. Right. There's no way possible. You know, so yeah. right. So 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 like adding on to what Doc here said, just just the basis of water. You got people who say they don't like how water tastes. Yep. Like hear, really, yeah, you know, I hear so, that all the time. <laughs> I just, love water. So you have, right, and and you have to love it because whenever whenever you overheat, I, I've never seen anybody ask for no soda, for you know, for no juice. For anything like that, when it's outside, you hot outside, and and you dehydrated, man. People going in with that water, you know. But but I, I think what we can do is like start from the uh, uh, basics before you before you start having having to be put on medication. What is it that you like plant wise? You know, what kind of fruits and vegetables do you like? And then just just start adding that. I always tell uh, my client my clients uh, start with your first meal. Just make make that plant based. Wake up in the morning, drink twenty ounces of water. Eat the uh, fruit fruit and vegetables that that you like. If you want to add um, oatmeal or grits or something like that, because grits in essence is um, how many not bad. Right. Essence wise, you know, it's what you add to it. Right. You know, and and if you like that, then start there, and then close it out with twenty ounces of water. I can guarantee you're not gonna be eating. Eating, you know, in a, in the same portion size that you would if you, if you went to McDonald's and you were buying three three number threes on on the uh, on on the breakfast menu because you you're gonna be filled up with water you're gonna be flush your system is gonna flush and then you're gonna be adding adding foods and carbs and nutrients and minerals that you need so your body gonna be ready your body ready to go now yeah. especially after you uh, uh, after you flush it and then one then after that you you on your way. But we don't know what that feels like. That's the reason why we be we be adding on to what people be saying about Mondays and Wednesdays. Mm. Mondays are horrible. Wednesdays are bad too. Oh. I mean, what 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 are we talking about? Like like these are individual days. There's no right. such thing. Right. There's no such thing. Every day is a day. It ain't you know. But then going back to the connotations, we have connotations added on the stuff, so we operate based on connotation and not knowing what things mean. And so we operate on Sunday, which is which is showing reverence to the sun. And then we consider that a holy day, which is holy means set apart day. And then we do it for some other type of ritual versus doing stuff for ourselves as well. So um, I think I think it's just it's starting from, from the base, you know, change one meal. One meal, the first one, yeah. try, try that for a while and, and see how your body reacts to it. And then you can start adding to it. Now I see, um, and they've been going on for a while. You see these ads <clears throat> or these commercials. Get a flat stomach <laughs> in three days or fifteen days, <laughs> thirty days flat stomach. I mean, does that stuff work? Yeah, yeah. You see, uh, boxers boxers do it all the time. You know, shedding shedding uh, water weight. You know, you know, for 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 weigh ins. Yeah. Like, like it, it does work. And like, if, if, if that's what you want, let me give you an example, man. I had a, um, it was a woman called me yesterday. She asked me if, if I knew anybody where she could get weight loss pills from. Mm. Think, think about that. She said anybody. She didn't ask about no doctor. She didn't ask about no, no facility. She, she, she said anybody. Like it don't even matter, you know. Just give me the pills. And she also has, and also, do you know anybody where I can get liposuction to get the fat out of my stomach so I can place it in my butt? Wow. You know, so so, yeah. so just 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 think about that mindset. Is yeah. it's not about the health. It's about the way you think yeah. that you want to look. Cosmetic. And, yeah. Right. Wow. Wow. So, Doc Kier, I know you play ball uh, on a higher level, right? So we we would think athletes are healthy uh, but I know a lot of athletes and you know they may ha have high metabolisms and you know they keep off their weight and they're working out and running all the time but is your average athlete eating healthy and living a healthy life I mean on average not at all you know on average yeah uh number of plant-based, you know, vegan, vegetarian athletes is definitely, you know, less than uh, on average, but 
depending on the sport, and I played, you know, football, so you need that body, especially in football, to make up for what you're actually doing to your body. You know, because you have a grown man, 270 pounds, running into another grown man, 220 pounds, you know, they going head up, the collisions, you know, none of that is healthy. Right. You know, yeah. just to speak on the collision, but to maintain, like, because, you know, my body had to be much thicker. I was a headhunter, so, you know, I love to go hammer to hammer because, you know, back when I played, that was okay. It wasn't a penalty like now. Right. You know? So, and even back when I played, we we were trying to get every team's color on your helmet. You know, that showed that you was really doing something more. You know, you get the other team's color on your helmet, it's like you're doing work, you know. Right, right, I'll do that. <laughs> right, you know, so definitely, I mean, they're, they're watching, the average athlete watches what he eats, especially, you know, to maintain the highest level that they can, but it's not the healthiest. You know, like they might not eat as many sweets as the average individual, but, right. you know, they just have, like you said, a higher metabolism. They're going to intake more and, yeah. You know, it, it works for the sport. Yeah, I'm, I remember, uh, <clears throat> man, I can't not remember his name. He was a running back for the Houston Texans. He's retired now. And I remember he went vegan or plant-based. I need to tell him, Arian Foster? Yes. Yeah. It was a yeah. big deal, man. Like, <laughs> it was a big deal. They, they shunned him. And uh, I don't, man, they really talked down on this brother, man, in the media. And... I was like, wow, man. And it was different for me to hear an athlete say he's going plant-based. And uh, yeah, I didn't know much about it. But then you fast forward. Last year, uh, Chris Paul went plant-based. And you got some other athletes going plant-based. And I can see the difference with Chris Paul, man. It, it probably added five more years to his career, man. And he's back dunking. I hadn't seen Chris Paul dunk since college. <laughs> and he, he's back dunking, man. And, and so I think that stigma... Is changing, and um, and I think the the uh, the idea was, or or what we thought was 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 needed, is that meat and the heavy the heavy uh, food on us, so we can pick up those pounds and take that punishment. But you know, I think that stigma is changing a bit. You know, so well, like I love to say, and I've heard or read someone say either psychologically or subconsciously, we desire what our meat eats. Mm. And when you're eating properly, your meat eats green. Your meat is eating vegetarian style, lifestyle. You know? And just like, you know, you want to get the eggs that are vegetarian, you know, chicken, chicken vegetarian based eggs or eggs that are cage, cage free. And, you know, those types of things so that everybody has room to grow and eat. And they're eating the proper diet, which is plant-based. And that's really what you desire. So just like you say with the athletes, the Tennessee Titans defense, you know, they did that. And there was a special on that. And they, you know, how they just, uh, I think one, one of the guys started it and his wife was like a chef and then she started making it for the whole defense and everybody, you know, like, hey man, can we, because your average individual, when they hear you, that, they think that you're only eating certain things and it's not very flavorful or tasteful life, mm -hmm. which is totally incorrect, you know, right. because plant-based diet, I always say it's like my taste buds are having the orgasm, man. Like everything is so many flavors and there's so much to taste. You know, except, except that dead meat that you always eat, you know. And so it's that's a little bit of a brainwashing, but it's not that difficult to come out of if everybody was to really take it on board and charge with your, you know, the next individual or your family member or your family, your household, you know, to that. 
if yeah. that's what the goal is. Okay. Yeah. Now with the U Village or or any time you guys go to the juvenile system, you're speaking consciousness. <clears throat> Are you guys also bringing the fitness to the table also? Okay, so you guys are, are, are exercising these, these kids? Well, I would like to just add, are we bringing fitness, man? Uh, on behalf of Demetrius's relationship with the YMCA, we actually was able to get 13 pieces of equipment donated to the jail. So we actually built them their own gym. Wow. You know, wow. so yeah, yeah, we definitely bring in fitness. We have a, a simulated gym rotation to where, you know, we're showing them how exercises go, how it is in the gym, how it is to clean up. So you know, that was something that they wanted to pursue later on as, a career, a hustle, if they, you know, enjoy working out, just wanted to be in the gym, you know, we were showing them avenues and access to be able to do that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, wow, shout out to the YMCA. <clears throat> People we got, Demetrius Glenn and Dr. Kier Bay from Know Yourself Fitness and Mentoring Group. Now, from experience, I, I know uh, when, I'm, when I was stressed, I hadn't been stressed in a while, man. I just have a different take on things now. <laughs> so, uh, but I was really going through it about three or four years ago. And uh, Demetrius read some of my book. I don't, think, I don't know if you finished yet, <laughs> but. Uh, close, close, close. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So he, he knows, man, I was going through it, man, uh, three or five, three, three to five years ago. And so I got a different take on stress. But back then, I know when I was going through that, uh, I would work out. And that would, that would <laughs> relieve some stress mentally off of my body, just working out, sweating, running, you know, walking, and that will, re will relieve stress. Are you seeing the benefits uh, of uh, the fitness as far as mental and emotional stress with these kids? Because not, not only do they come from toxic and stressful situations, but man, when you get into that system, it's probably even more stressful because you're around aggressive guys <laughs> that are, probably more aggressive than you and every day is defending yourself probably so do you see that they're more relaxed emotionally and mentally because of the fitness i would, I would also add staff members too uh, you have aggressive staff members yes you have yes. staff members who who really don't care about you you have staff members who gonna tell you straight up i ain't your friend so so you know you're not building right with that I would say uh, over, overall, yes. I mean, there, there's always there's always some that that you, you're not going to connect with. You know, it's just it, it's just nature. But overall, we we've actually noticed boys come in, and some of them may may have had had a fight earlier, or they may have gotten in trouble earlier, or or they they may have gotten some bad news from a from a phone call, you know, or or wh whatever the case may be. And so they may come in come in with an attitude, you know, mad or hurt. Or crying, or or whatever, and then and then once once they see everybody moving, you know, like like, like Doc here was saying, we we have circuits, so we, we have different machines like chest press machine, leg press machine, lat pull down machine, and we have them just going going through stations and showing them proper technique, because that's the easiest way to be able to utilize the time uh, that we have, and then we'll add in uh, body weight exercises to go along with it. And, and so when, when we do that, then things start to change with them because because now if everything is being is being placed in a, a circuit time frame. So, so now they don't have time to think. Mm. Go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. So once you start being focused on what you have to do next, you don't have time to be thinking about all, all that crazy stuff that you just came out of. Right. You know, and then at the same time, you know, you got the uh, you got the bantering, the competition, you know, they may challenge us. At the same time, they challenge each other. They challenge the staff members, and then, and then you know, you can see them starting to feel better about about the, the actual space that that they're in. So, so Doc, Doc here mentioned this uh, some years back, and he made this comment about our space being a safe haven for them. Like, like when when they come into our space, they treat us differently because we're not staff. Mm. You know, we don't talk like them, we don't look like them, we don't act like them. And and to add on to what you were saying. Majority of staff in jails are extremely unhealthy as well. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Right. So you you add that on there. You got long hours. 
you don't eat well yeah. and you don't eat as frequently as you want and, and you're sitting down or you may have to get physical every now and then. So I'll have attitude probably too, bro. Right, right. You know, you know, so 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 overall, man, man, we, we just witnessed uh staff members coming in because when we put it together, we we pitched it as the staff members can come and utilize the space to work out as well. Yeah. You know, because we have a treadmill, we we have a um uh, uh, a spin bike uh, that's in there um, as well. So so if everybody has what they need, it just has to be utilized. And so we we've seen changes in them like just 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 stepping in and seeing us and and and, and we spot we smile at them and greet them man you you see attitudes and things change when they see us you know smiles come mm -hmm. you know or the expectations if we don't show up then then we, we get chastised yeah, you know yeah, what's up yeah, sir right what yeah. happened to you man you know and then that's when we know that that the relationship building has yeah. has been working because there's an expectation for us to be there yeah, that's and a relief add, for them. Yeah, right. Definitely, definitely. and to add, you, you mentioned you know stress and mood lifters or mood changers. I would also add, we've actually been able to witness character being built there as well. You know, I've had a uh, because of our unique relationship with the boys not being staff and them able to trust in us and different things i've actually been able to challenge you know a couple of the boys in their school work so one of the boys one time was like sir you know if i don't pass this test or if i don't you know make uh my points this next week then i owe you 100 push-ups and you know he was one of the boys that struggled in push-ups and then you know, came time around. I was like, "Yo, man, what's up? Did you pass?" And he was like, "Yeah, I passed." Like, All right, bet. He's like, "No, no, sir, I'm lying. I didn't." And he got down there and he did that hundred that he owed me. And the staff was like, "Man, I never even expected that side from that man. You know, from right. that young man." But you know, it's something like that to 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 witness that. You know, it's it's also very fulfilling man oh yeah but, you know you, you never know what it what 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 will be what oh yeah what will arise from what you're doing in there so oh yeah that progression man to see that progression is rewarding man. yeah yeah so and, and, and to yeah. add uh doc, doc here has also seen a lot of the boys when they got released mm. and and he and he, he's been able to interact with them you know after the fact as well so you know being able to see them and, and then connect you know, uh, on, on that at level, I've I've seen a few, but I haven't seen as many as 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 he has, you know, in in the past. And so, just to be able to get back in that space with them on the outside, right? You yeah. know, and and then and then catch, catching up with them, what, what what you're doing now, what you got going, right. what's the game plan, you know? And then you know, we we can exchange numbers and and then re really really work on getting with them. And we we haven't had the opportunity to really be able to be consistent with with one. Yet, because you got the you got the parents that are involved now. When we were dealing with them, you know, they were in jail. You're right. So, so, so now, now the parents are gonna have to feel comfortable and vibe with us, and and um, and just be open for us to be able to come and aid them with, with their son, not even realizing that we already had an experience with mm -hmm. them. We've right. already built rapport. We already built that. You know, and that, now we want to add it on the outside to help them move forward. So we we struggle with that too, man. Because just because, you know, we all we all say we want to we want our, our our children to <laughs> to succeed, but sometimes we don't want all the help that, that comes with it as well. Yeah. Well, I, I think most of that is they don't want certain things exposed, and so once you start digging deep and get connected to the home, you start finding out, man, these parents are messed up. <laughs> and and that's why this child is like this you know so they don't right. want you too close to it right but it was cool mm -hmm. when they was in the juvenile system right so <laughs> man um i noticed something a few years ago uh, I, i've been coaching since i was in high school coaching basketball and uh it's just been a passion of mine so but about four years ago maybe five years ago it was a couple of guys a couple of homies i was tight with you know, we, we don't, we don't, we're not connected anymore, but I was tight with them. And I started back coaching. I had took a, a break from coaching for a while because I was traveling a lot for work, started back coaching. And I'm like, man, uh, 
man, you guys ever think about coaching or mentoring young men? And they had daughters, but they didn't have sons. I said, man, you guys are family men. You're professionals, man. You go to work, <laughs> you, you got homes and you pay, you pay card notes. Like you, you, you know, you're responsible. Why not share that, share that with some young men? Man, these guys were not interested at all. <laughs> I didn't understand that. But is do you guys see that as being the issue out there? Like I saw that, like there's just some some guys just don't want to mentor. Is there a lack of mentorship out there? There's a lack of mentorship as it pertains to us coming back for them. Mm. Like, like, like to give you an example, you know, where, where we where we go. There are so many uh, white organizations there. I mean, you can you can fill up you can fill up the whole campus with them because they got their own programming. You know, they got their own money. They already have their stuff set. They're going to come in and they're going to provide their service. Keyword is service. And right. they're going to get in and get out. And then and then there it is. And then like what Doc here mentioned earlier, you know, they um, their their buy in is the uh, Capri Suns and the cupcakes. And, and and the cookies. If, if if I was if I was locked up in there as a teenager and they're bringing cookies and juice, shit, I'd be up in there too. Right, right, right. Because the because the food quality there is very terrible as well. Because they're eating the same food. Just to just to add this, they those boys eat the same food that the men in the Hutchins unit in in, in the Wilma Hutchins prison here here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. They eat the same food. They have it. They have it uh, shipped by um, a golf cart down to them. They put it in a microwave with a, with a plastic strap uh, um, cover on top of that thing. Warm it up for them. Here, this is what you eating? Soy products. Yeah, yeah. You know, so 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 they eating that every day. And then when you got somebody bringing in snacks or junk food, shoot, they all on top of that. So of course they're going to participate in your program. But what kind of impact are they having? And most most of the time, we I don't remember one one boy telling us that they were impacted by any group that was in there. To be honest with you, wow. To so be honest, just, you know, yeah, it's, just a, it's just a payday, basically. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but to us though, but us though, we're not. They don't see us though, like us, right? Brothers, right? right. They don't see us. They see yeah, men. Yeah. There's a lack of us. There's right. a lack. I don't know if it's for want. Well, it's not for want because when we talk to men that have something to offer, they're like, man, I would love to get in there, you know, but there's just, you know, whatever that imaginary hump is from crossing that line, you know, it never takes place. So mm -hmm. it's not like we haven't tried, you know, we definitely have tried to get other brothers in there to for the men to see and you know we get a good hey man i would love to come up there with y'all and this and that and be a part but you know whether it really becomes fruitful or not it you know hardly ever shows so right right yeah i, I noticed you know people talk a good game but when it's actually time to do the work <laughs> you know they, they know where to be found so i know you brothers do have services and provide services outside of the youth village what are some of those services you guys provide uh, uh, on a, I guess, a one-on-one -on -one or even a group uh, aspect. Yeah. We have, man, we, we offer one-on-ones, uh, you know, in, in person, that's, that's, that, that's kind of, at this point, you know, shaky, it all depends on who, who you are and, and that type of thing. But we do one-on-ones, uh, we, we do groups, but we also do, do a lot of virtual uh, now you know, as well. I, I was thinking about what you were saying about uh, stress, you know, and, and, and how you use working out, you know, to, to, uh, to de-stress. I would actually, man, I, I'm actually, I'm going to send you this link uh, late, later on. Checking out Dakir do his, um, we, have, we have a contract with DISD, but checking out him do his, his seated stretching med meditation class, you know, for, for DISD, I think that's like one of the, um, one of the easier ones that you can do where you really, I've actually been in the, the recording studio with this man and the, and the, um, and the camera guy. Here one time we all, we and the camera guy fell, dozed off up in that mud, bro. Like he's supposed to be recording. 
<laughs> doing a dozed off, doing the recording, man. And but I'm just saying, like he has, he has this this way, like like he just truly embodies the whole thing. From you know, you know, I have to, I I look at all the videos, you know, over and over again, so I I can see the little subtle movements and the and the and the, the subtle adjustments that he makes, right. and. And there's sometimes where he actually leaves, and when I when I mean by leave, I mean like he like travels somewhere else. Right. Like there are times that where it happens, and and then he he comes back, and and you can like tell with his with his 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 body movements what's really going on. So that lets you know this is somebody who really does it. Yes, yeah. You know, this ain't no somebody who like okay, y'all bring the hands together, right. and we're gonna play, place it on your heart center and all that type of stuff. Like like he he's actually in it with you. And you can actually feel that thing, man. And and so I would I would actually recommend and it's all seated, you know, too. So man, I'm I'm gonna send you the link so you can check okay. it out and you yeah. can pass it on to to whoever. But but I think that's an easy way to get people to to start the process of like learning how to sit down, man. Sit down and be quiet, like in, in silence. That's one of the hardest things for us to do because people are scared to to be with themselves. Oh yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, to be alone. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Dakir, Dakir, uh, practiced that. I don't know if you were in on the Zoom call yet the other day. I, mm -hmm. I think you came in later, <clears throat> but yeah, it kind of threw me off. I thought it was a joke at first, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Leon asked him to to uh, exercise that, and uh, to, mm -hmm. he told us to close our eyes <clears throat> and uh, loosen our fingers, and uh, it's a few other things, but I can't remember. But initially, I thought it was a joke. I thought I thought that they were playing around. <laughs> then I was like, then I looked at the screen. I'm like, everybody, everybody are they serious? <laughs> <laughs> they in, so, they yeah, in there. Yeah. So, so I closed, I closed my eyes, and you know, I got into it. Hey man, right. I felt it though. I felt the difference. I was like, okay, oh yeah, he's for real about this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I uh, <laughs> I had the opportunity before this lockdown started in 2019 to go to Vipassana Meditation Center, and it's a 10 day silent meditation retreat. So you start off from day zero to day nine with no talking. You know, you're just meditating with the group for four and a half hours a day, and then you meditate by yourself for like six to seven hours a day. You know, two meals, one snack, no TVs, no interactions, you know, no talking, no working out, no reading. So just to be in that silence and, and to be with the earth and the vibration and you really, you gonna, you know, and a lot of people can't handle it. Some people that mm. say, oh, I'm gonna come here and start this experience, you know, they can't handle it, man. They leave, you know, day two, day three, day four. So to have been able to do that, now I'm hooked, man. You know, I wish I could go back every year. I, was, I had to miss last year, you know, because what's going on. But it's such a good experience to, like you say, just be able to sit, be quiet, just what I was taught in, in my meditation is just to feel, you know. Right, right. So just feel and don't respond. Just feel and don't respond and don't think. That's another thing a lot of people have an issue with is when they want to get into a meditation, it has to be a guided, somebody talking, and that's to still keep them to an extent distracted. You know, when you're sitting in that silence, there's nothing to run to, you know. It's all you, baby. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I enjoy that a lot. Yeah, man, I enjoyed it. It threw me off initially, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so what are some some exercises people can do at home just starting out, man, to try to start getting in shape? If they can't hire you guys on a personal level, what can they do at home? At a beginner's level. I have a uh 65-year-old client, 66-year-old client, and she has been doing two-minute planks to start our workouts for the last two years. 
So whenever we start a workout, you know, virtual or be it in person, and I got I, I got told her I was jealous of her being able to do the plank so good, I had to start doing it with her. So <laughs> yeah, that whenever we have a session, we start out with you know a plank. I mean, and because that's something if you sleep on your stomach, you know, you you push up, you're gonna mm-hmm. be planking, you know, either from your knees or you know, in the full plank position. So that's one easy one to start with. You know, jumping jacks or step outs. Uh, I, I'm i a big fan of the jump rope. A lot of people be like, oh, I haven't jump rope since elementary school. I said, I know. And it's so good to get back to. Right. You know, even to start with the, the fake jump rope, you know, if you just start that imitating the jump rope with the hop, you know, you can start there. Um, squats, of course, you know, I mean, you squat when you go to the bathroom, when you go to the commode. So you can practice, you know, during your TV time, during the commercials, you do squat pulses where you come down, tap your hips and tap your glutes on wherever you were sitting on to stand up, you know, do that 10, 15 times, and you know, a couple of rounds of that during the commercial break, you know, something easy like that. Okay. Mountain climber is in the plank position and bringing your knees up. You don't have to be running. You know, you don't have to simulate running because everybody can't do that properly. So you can just bring your knees up high. You know, that movement, that gets the whole body involved. Just easy, easy little movements that do the whole body. That's very, that's something real quick and easy, those people. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. Now, now guys, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. There's a stigma out there. Oh. And this is and because of this stigma, this is why my wife would never go to a personal trainer. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys, I'm gonna give you an out. Not currently, <laughs> not currently. In the past, have you guys had to face the challenge of turning down the women? <laughs> oh, definitely so. Okay. No. I no. Have. <laughs> Honestly. Wow. It's I funny have. because and that's that's the portion of Demetrius and myself's energy relationship is he has experienced that and I haven't. So, you know, I've been going on seven years to so next year will be my eighth year as a certified trainer. Not you know, not at all. Wow, wow. That's unique. Because <laughs> you, you, you do know that that's out there, right? <laughs> well, I mean, like the women at my other class, in my, when I had kickboxing, they would be like, you know, the women in the locker room are talking about you and this and that. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. But that's just locker room chat. Like, I'm not a part of it. It's not a part of the classroom. Uh-huh. You know, when they come to class, you know, we get straight to business. It's no jokes. It's none of that. Yeah. fooling around or even to the point where somebody would even get the wrong idea like I was even you know coming on to him flirting with them or whatnot but and Demetrius is energy it's like man is he like that with everybody like yeah so some <laughs> women think oh he's singling me out taking the wrong he way acts and, yeah. you know how he does but that's just his over lovingly energy that they're not used to I mean coming into a class for the first time and this man is coming up to you and hugging you. Oh, thank you for being here. Welcome. You know, he gives you, we give real hugs. You know, we don't give, you know, tappy, tappy hugs. You know, we like really embrace the person. And a lot of women love real embraces, you know. So they're like, oh, my goodness. And then, you know, they might take that the wrong way with Demetrius. But that's just his overall energy. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, and, and this is a word to anyone listening, <clears throat> particularly the brothers. Yeah, if you're if you're coaching or mentoring uh, or you're a masseuse, <laughs> well, well, we'll leave that out. But if you're mentoring or, or uh, coaching, it would be uh, it would be best for you to keep it professional. Behoove Espe- you. <clears throat> yeah, behoove you. Yeah, and and especially you know when you're dealing with kids. Uh, because this is the thing, the mothers, uh, most, most of the time, in, at least in our community are single and they, they get off on, and 
the, you got the strong alpha male presence teaching her son, being involved in her son's life. Uh, you know, he's taking he's taking the lead, and um, they want that. And so, I mean, you could be approached with certain things, man, and certain challenges, and you got to be disciplined and focused to not cross that line and keep it about the kids. And so uh, I had to learn that at an early age, in my early 20s. And that energy was different because I'm out there just coaching, right? Early 20s. But I'm not knowing that these mothers are attracted to me. So I've crossed that line a couple of times in my younger days. And as I got older, you know, I know what to look out for. And so, yeah, it's just not even worth it, brothers. That's a great point, too, brother. I was going to mention, I haven't witnessed it on a youthful level, but I've witnessed it from an adult level. And so I've seen the coach be involved with the client's mother to the point where the client's goals just disappeared because he couldn't handle, you know, with the fact that, and this was from an adult, you know, so let alone it be a child where, you know, they have to witness that, you know, as an adult, she was like, whatever, the, you know, she's grown and she knows what she's doing, man. But the psychological effects, you know, they run deeper than, than that little quick experience, like you say. So right. that, that's right. a great point. Yeah, it's not it's not even worth messing up your, your name <clears throat> and your image, you know, right. for, for, you know, one night. Yeah, it's not even worth it, man. And uh, and there's nothing more sexy than a disciplined man. That's what that's what women tell tell me <laughs> when they see this a disciplined man. You know that's that's a, that's sexy, and so uh, yeah yeah just just a little bit of word of advice to the men out there. Sure. So that cure that cure how how can they contact you if they want some personal service through through uh, virtually or when when the economy well not the economy society opens up more and they can meet you face to face, how can they contact you on social media or, or through uh, your line? Uh, I can be contacted through, uh, I let Demetrius give the web page information out, but we have an Instagram, Know Yourself Fitness and Mentoring group that we can be contacted on. Uh, there's a Facebook, Know Yourself Fitness, fitness and mentoring that we can be contacted on as well. And I have a business uh, email. It's let's get it fitness at hotmail. So it's L-E-T-S-G-E-T-I-T-F-O-R-L-I-F-E. Let's get it for life at hotmail.com. And that's where I normally take uh, my business clients' emails. Mm, cool. <clears throat> Demetrius, your website? So mine, mine is, yeah, the, the website is knowyourselffitnessandmentoringgroup.com. So our, our full name, .com, at, at the end. And um, and my email address is similar to his. Um, you know, is, is getyourworkin365 at gmail.com. Okay. So literally get your work in and the numbers 365 at gmail.com. Cool. Now, now people, these guys are based out of the DFW area, but what's so good about technology, hey, hit these guys up. You can set something up virtually. <laughs> so it doesn't right. even matter. You can be outside the country and, and connect with these guys. So, you know, that's, that's the, uh, the beauty of technology. So go ahead. One thing to add about the virtual, I was just saying the other day, I actually enjoy teaching virtually if I can't get with the person, you know, in a face-to-face setting, but to the point where I have a client and she'll be doing some squat pulses and she'll be sideways and she'll be a distance away from the camera and I see it and I'll be like, spread your legs apart. You know, I can still see her to the point where I know her legs aren't spread apart or when we're doing the lunge, I'm like, you know, you need to drop your back knee a little bit more. I can see that, you know. So don't think, you know, you're going to be slacking when you're getting <laughs> trained virtually because we can see all of that as well, too. And, 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 and adding on to what Dr. Here was saying, um, we do, we, we, you, we can do fitness assessments virtually as well, you know, so Ooh. we don't have to see each other. 
you know, in, in order to start the process. We can do the fitness assessments virtually. We can do everything virtually. Wow. You know, wow. so it, 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 it's just about you just want to start the process. And, and uh, for, for, for the listeners, Stacy came out and actually it, it experienced a, a, a yoga fit class a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And and it was it, it was beautiful. It was beautiful to watch him because he he, he had never experienced it. First time. And so <laughs> it was it was to us it's basic. But when you do basic stuff properly, is that isn't it not the same as what you think? Right, right, right. <laughs> it's not the same as what you think. It's not yeah, the same. I kept, and, I kept asking, man, is there a beginner's level? And <laughs> and they were like, man, this I don't this know. There's it. no beginner's level. This is it. And man, I almost tapped <laughs> out. I was, I was <laughs> talking about you, man. People were like, hey, man, do you, can we take baby steps? I've never seen a baby learn how to walk. <laughs> And then start, and then don't run at some point. Like babies don't do baby steps. Man, I almost <laughs> tapped out. But what it was, man, I was like, and I did take a few pauses, uh, uh, quick breaks. But I kept thinking, man, I went to school with this dude. He <laughs> he knows too many people. I know. No, nah, you can't quit. <laughs> you can't quit. Right. What's that motivation? You got yeah, that yeah. You can't quit. I can't leave that on my name. So right, right. I finished the session and I'm going back uh, my season. Uh, I coach two teams. So the last game of one of the teams is tonight. And I told him after the season, uh, me and my wife are going to go and, and do the session because she's she wants to go. And I was like, babe, I don't know. I don't, it ain't what you think. I said, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> I, she like, I want to go. I said, OK, all right. So I reached out to him. And, 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 you know, got the prices for the sessions, man. But we're going to do it once the season ends. Uh, my last t- my last game for one of my team, my sixth graders tonight, my eighth graders season end next week, man, and we're going to jump on board with you. So, uh, yeah. yeah, man, it, it was uh, – it shocked me. It shocked me. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know it would take that toll on me. And I was sore, man. It was a good sore, though. I was sore for about right. a week. Right. And mm-hmm. what's crazy – Man, no, no lie. I saw my body tone up, like just from that day. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, I got, I got, you know, a good muscle memory, you know. But I saw a tone that's come about just from that one session, man. So I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going mm. back. So yeah, anybody listening, <laughs> that yoga is for real. It's <laughs> for real. Yeah, <laughs> it's not just for women. Yeah, quick, quick, <laughs> quick uh, plug. Tamara Johnson is the owner, Enso Apothecary out in Fort Worth, Texas Westland University. Yes. Off of off of uh, uh Rosedale Road out in, in Fort Worth. You know, that's that that that's the studio, yeah. you know, yeah. that that he, he's, he's talking about. I mean, nice, beautiful, nice spot. Beautiful studio, yeah. Black owned. So please, please support because man, it's a lot of positive things coming coming from there. And then once this COVID stuff. Uh, subsides, however it's going to be, you know, you, you, you're going to need a, a, a place where you feel safe to go to, you know, with, with people that look like you who are not trying to get over on right. you, right? you know, as well. And and you can get, get quality and quality teaching in there, too. Oh, yeah. No doubt, man. No doubt. I learned a lot. Good experience. So, guys, this last segment, I call it 10 speed, like the bike 10 speed. So what I do, man, I name off 10 words. And I'm just going to go through them. And you guys say the first thing that comes to mind. Now, usually I have one person I'm having a conversation with. So we're going to alternate. We'll start with Demetrius with the first word. We'll go to Dakir. And then we'll go back and forth, right? So you just say the first thing that comes to you. Starting with Demetrius. Squat. Do it properly. Push up. All the way down. Plank. Shoulders over the elbows. Lunge. Reverse to save your front knee. Burpee. A real burpee is when you do a (laughs) (laughs) push-up. Dead dead lift. Pay attention to your back position. 
Pull up. Ooh. Grown cool. man, grown man stuff. That's grown Ooh. man exercise. <laughs> That's grown man right there. <laughs> grown man. Overhead press. From the chest, not the back. Walking. Straight feet, opposite hand, opposite foot. All right, last one. Swimming. Is mm. incredible for the whole body. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Guys, man, Demetrius, Dakir, man, I appreciate you brothers joining me, man. This was educational. And uh, you guys are going to do great, continue to do great things, man. I'm proud of you. And, and I don't know if the people know, but <clears throat> I'm from the Grove also. So, hey, man, this pulls on my emotional cord to see where these brothers are. And uh, Demetrius reminds me all the time, you know, that I wrote a book. He's like, man, you're from the Grove, <laughs> man. You're from Pleasant Grove, <laughs> and you wrote a book. I'm right. like, and I think about it, I'm like, damn, that is kind of a big deal from where I come from. So, man, I'm proud of you brothers, what you guys are doing and making an impact on the community, man, and the world. So I'm, I'm proud of you guys, man. So thank you for joining me, man. You want to say anything to the people before y'all tap out and leave? Hey, bro, thank you for your time and, and just, just thank you for for just having us with this, you know, what, what we would call chopping it up session. Yeah. You know, we really appreciate it, you know, and, and, and for, for those who, um, who who were interacting, you know, with this with this video, support us, man. And when I say support us, I mean all of us, yeah. you know, you know, not only the three of us, but support us, man, because there's a lot of us doing great things that's out there. So whatever resonates with you. Just, just go ahead and contribute and make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Dr. anything, brother? Nationality is the word and the order of the day. Love and light. Well, leave. Hey, that's we'll leave it on that, brother. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Salute. Love y'all. Hey, thank you, brother. Peace. Peace.